If you've watched any amount of Marvel 2 with yipes on the mic, you've probably heard this. <laughs> oh! Break his guard! Oh, so guard breaks are a pretty simple concept. In a normal jump, you can only block once. So you force the opponent to block something, let them come out of block stun, and hit them. The reason we see this so often is because you're actually in this normal jump state on incoming. So depending on your character, it can be pretty easy to set up a guard break. One of the most common setups is with cable. Jump hard punch for them to block, hyper viper beam, hold down so the first bit whiffs and they come out of block stun, then hit them with the rest, which you can obviously loop into itself for a touch of death. As a consequence to guard breaks, you'll see far less normal jumping in Marvel 2. Although guard breaking a normal jump on reaction isn't really a thing, it can happen on accident due to assists. Super jumps don't get guard broken. On top of that, you actually turn around in the air if you cross someone up, making it easier to hit them. And the top tiers have enough air mobility to make the super jump state still threatening, so it's your go-to movement option. Guard breaks in the Versus series didn't originate in Marvel 2, however. They existed in every game before that. Marvel vs. Capcom 1, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and X-Men vs. Street Fighter. It might seem strange, but you don't actually see that many guard breaks in X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and that's because there's something way better. You can actually hit the opponent before they enter the screen and are able to control their character to block. You just jump up into the air as close to the corner as possible and put out an attack. Couple this with the fact the game is filled with infinites, pretty much everyone can do a one-touch kill and, I mean, one single touch. It's great. Guard breaks also didn't end with the release of Marvel 3, they just changed. The definition of what a guard break is versus an unblockable is somewhat hazy here. You could, for example, call using a low assist while doing an overhead an unblockable or a guard break, but we're going to stick with the more common definition which revolves around punishing push block. In Marvel 3, when you push block, it extends your block stun massively, so you can't just do it and immediately start taking your turn. However, you're not actually throwing vulnerable during the whole of this time, and you cannot tech. What this results in is if you read an opponent is going to push block, you can use movement tools such as an air dash to negate it and throw them. This becomes super important on incoming because often the opponent will want to push block to either stop a cross up attempt or extend the block stun they're in so you'll automatically guard it. Now obviously the key difference here between Marvel 3 and the rest of the games is you don't have to push block. And if they do push block, you don't have to do it immediately. This is where all the mind games come in and why it's such an exciting take on guard breaks. Although these glitches are accidental, their inclusion and subsequent acceptance from the community is one of the reasons why the Versus series stand out so much. There are so many mechanics, glitches or metas to consider when playing and half of them would have absolutely been patched out nowadays. But by letting it rock, we have a franchise that you cannot recreate because no one is making a game this busted and amazing. Glitches are innovative. No developer is thinking something like guard breaks could be in an acceptable fighting game. No one's coming up with that idea because it's just so out there. But it works in these games and it's awesome and it's unique. But we've seen it happen once and that's really important. You've got games like Skullgirls that incorporate some of these glitches into their game. Look at Push Block Guard Cancel. That's from Marvel 2 and previous games, and it's in a modern game. That's really awesome. <laughs>